Hey everybody, DM Jim here. Welcome to the 100th episode of the Tabletop Engineer. I never would have imagined that I would have put out 100 videos um, for the hobby I enjoy and hopefully you enjoy. Uh, it actually snuck up on me. Um, if I had, if I had really, really thought about it, I might have done something uh, a little different. But ultimately, I went back to what the channel is all about, which is terrain. For those of you who've been following for some time, you know that recently, in the last few months, actually maybe four or five months, I did a series of videos uh, on goblin terrain. I did, uh, I think, five in all. And basically, what I was making was sort of a goblin fortress or castle. And each piece individually, uh, it breaks up into those pieces that could be used individually on the tabletop, but together they make this really grand <clears throat> fortress that goblins would, would build using, you know, wood and rope and whatever, uh, they, they have available. But something has been nagging me for a while. There was something missing from the fortress that, um, I, I wanted to take a break from the goblin stuff. And it was good that I did because I needed that break from it to really get motivated to tackle this next one. I'm going to take you to the tabletop and show you the steps I did and, and the process for how I made this. But let me share it with you. I'm really loving this. And it's, I may have to back up here. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the Goblin Shaman Tower. Now, goblins, they're just like us. They want good schools for their kids. They want a nice neighborhood. Goblins tend to mimic uh, the human structures. That's why, that's my, in my thought, that's what they do. That's why I built the fortress. But you know, a goblin shaman or a goblin witch doctor, you know they've got to be looking at wizard towers and telling their little goblin uh, friends, you know, I want one of those. So that's what I did. Now, the goblins building a tower, it's not going to be straight. It's not going to be um, safe. And it definitely is going to have a goblin look and feel to it. So I hope you agree that this is probably what a goblin tower might look like. Not straight, ropes, lots of uh, spiky things, uh, definitely weathered. And um, yeah, <laughs> excuse me again. This one was really fun to make. It is... It's way too big, but it was fun. So let's get to the tabletop and let's see how I made this. And hopefully you'll take it on and make one yourself. And I'd love to see it if you do. Let's go take a look. I began this project with a single sheet of 12 inch by 12 inch chipboard. I traced a circle on the paper, uh, on the chipboard, so that I would have a, uh, a rough outline for the shape of the base of the tower. And then I glued, hot glued, a bunch of skewers down along with a circle to hold them together at the top. Now these were angled slightly, maybe, a, I don't know, maybe 10, 20 degrees. You don't want to go too crazy, but there definitely needs to be an angle visible. Then basically into my standard cutting of numerous and numerous and numerous pieces of chipboard into planks. These are then hot glued uh, along the edges. You'll want to make doors like you're seeing here before you go any further on a, on a column, for example. Uh, make sure you know where your doors are going to be and then glue the remaining chipboard uh, planks in. You could use regular glue, but hot glue dries quick. Uh, otherwise, this project could take a very long time. Now, for the second level, I just cut a second smaller circle. I want the tower to start narrowing as it gets taller. And I was a little more extreme with the angle on this one, as you can see here. I glued more skewers uh, at an angle and then glued the chipboard circle in and then finished it up and this gave me the second level and I did this again for a third level and then again you know you're just going to um, cut a bunch of chipboard to make the planks now I went ahead and did the third and second level before I added all the planks um, and this this tower started to get really unwieldy I mean it was getting tall enough it was getting hard to move it around and work here I am building a platform, by the way, one of the balconies, and I made three of these uh, as the tower grew. But to get back to my point, uh, you're going to want to, at some point, break this tower up if you make something like this. You'll see shortly that I, the top of the tower I built as a completely separate structure, 
and then glued it on. Now here I am adding some supports. The um, it, it, it the tower was leaning enough that it looked like it would actually fall. So I added these braces to the right side, and uh, then I just glued a bunch of planks as, as cross pieces. Uh, and then I started working on the stairs and a platform for the Goblin Shaman to stand on. The stairs are tricky. Um, I used at first just pieces of chipboard with a little dowel underneath them to give them support. But the hot glue was strong enough that I eventually just started just gluing the stairs directly to the base without a dowel. Now when you get to painting, you'll want to be careful not to rip these off. Here I am building the uh, the platform. It's uh, it's between the first and second level of the tower, and it was just something to balance the left side with those um, those braces on the right side. Then I finished up the third level with the planks, and this is the point where I decided that I just couldn't. It was I was having to angle it to get access to it. So this is why I decided to build the very top portion of the tower as a separate build when I finished this part of the project. You'll notice I'm using the 321 metal uh, pieces to sort of hold the chipboard in place. Now before I uh, added anything else, I took some toothpicks with sharp points and I started adding spikes all around the tower. Now here I am working on the top part of the tower. I just cut a piece of square chipboard, glued some dowels in, this was sort of made up as I went. I really didn't, I just knew it was going to develop as, as it went, so I didn't have an idea in mind. I just started gluing dowels down, looking for some kind of crazy looking shape. I went with tall dowels on the four corners and then shorter dowels for the inside square where another tower or a little platform would be at the top. I glued down a whole bunch of planks on top of this and then added the top platform right there and uh, that was it. Um, I didn't add string yet. I did add some spikes and some uh, some edging and then I glued this on top of the uh, the tower. One of the things I almost forgot to do before I went out to paint this was I don't like the smoothness of dowels. Uh, these look too perfect. They're They're too straight, too smooth and that's not what goblins would do. Same with up here at the um, at the top with the uh, the tower part. These these are just so smooth. So what I do in this case, I use this stuff called Liquitex Flexible Modeling Paste. What I do is I dip my finger in a bit of it like this, and I just start I I, I sort of smear it around a little bit, and then I go and I take my finger and I just start smearing it along the body of the uh, of the dowels like this, okay? Get a good coverage of it. This one I'm gonna do for you right here. So once you've covered it, take your finger and just do like this. Just touch it and then pull away. And what it does, it pulls a little bit off and when it dries, it takes about, I guess it takes a couple hours to dry, but I've had really good luck with this after painting and priming because if you do this, it starts looking like a natural tree timber look and you can't really make a mistake on this I mean anything is better than leaving it plain as a dowel after I black bombed the tower I took some burnt sienna and gave it two coats over the entire tower the first coat dried and it was just a bit too dark I put the second coat on and that's when the orange brown started coming out and uh, you don't have to do that. You could leave it just with a single coat and it looks like brand new wood in my opinion. But I wanted that orangey color and here I am spinning it around so you can see all of the uh, sides before I applied the uh, string and the gray weathering. Now this was sort of random. I just took some string and I tied it to various poles uh, to create some, you know, it looks like it's holding things up. I added some additional string from the top of the tower down to the base platform just to give it, uh, it was, it needed balance. I, 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 it was just a look. I took some red paint and tipped all of the spikes in red. And then I took some light gray and I dry brushed the entire structure to give that wood that weathered, 
you know, uh, sun damaged look. Next, I just took some tacky glue, smeared it all over the base, and poured some sand for the basing. I, I, I tend to say, and that's it, but this one was a little more involved. It, it definitely took a little longer than normal. That's why the video is probably going to be running a little longer. But ultimately, I am so pleased with how it turned out. Uh, this could be used as a standalone prop. If your adventurers stumbled across, you know, a, a goblin shaman or a goblin witch doctor or warlock or whatever you want to call it, this would be, you know, the perfect place to put them. Uh, they could stand up top to cast spells, have a few uh, guards posted here and there to protect them. It was fun, you know. I, I uh, as it as it got taller, uh, I started realizing that you know it needed some structures to hold things up on this leaning side. And then when it leaned a little this way, I added some rope, thinking you know it needs to be sort of held back. I also felt like the uh, tower needed a place for the uh, shaman stairs to go all the way. You know, I didn't want to go all the way around with it, but uh, it goes up to a platform here where the shaman could, you know, talk to the uh, the other goblins or give demonstrations of his power and things like that. Flags was just an aftertouch. Um, lots of spikes uh, all around uh, on the various levels. Three different balconies from which the shaman or uh, other goblins could fire weapons from, things like that. Yeah, I'm really happy with it. I hope you like it. It's not the end of my goblin uh, terrain. After I built this one, more ideas popped in my head. But again, I'm gonna take a little break from goblins. I'm not gonna do, do them in a row anymore. I need some time for it to simmer and percolate and, and uh, I'll come up with something new, so. Well, listen, uh, I have to thank all of you um, for supporting the channel. This is not a money maker for me. This is something I do. I would do this if YouTube didn't exist. I would make these things, but they would only be useful or visible to my players and the people who I game with. But um, it, YouTube allows me to share this with the world, and I hope you have enjoyed most of my projects. Uh, some of them I looked back the other night at all the things I've done over the last few years. There were some hits and there were some misses, but overall I think most of my projects or crafts uh, met the mark for me. Um, hopefully they met the mark for you. But you know, that's one of the things about crafting is sometimes you get to the end and you didn't deliver to yourself or to someone who maybe asked you to make it or what have you. But sometimes, like with the Goblin Tower, you have an idea in your mind, you take it to the end and you look at it and you think, wow, you know, I really pulled that off. Uh, let's talk about the next hundred episodes. <laughs> I don't know, um, two, you know, I don't think two years down the road for this kind of thing. Is it possible I'll hit 200? Absolutely. I'm still enjoying this. Um, as a matter of fact, I have more energy and drive than ever after taking that short break. Uh, down the road, I may take another break, I'm, but it won't be three, four months. It would be like maybe a month or something. But I do think that sometimes there is value in taking a step back. So just fair warning that, you know, I, I'm not stopping. These videos will continue to come. However, down the road, I may need to take a mental break or something like that. Thank you again for your support of the channel. Thank you for spreading the word. Uh, thank those of you who subscribe to my magazine, Bexum's Bazaar, which comes out monthly. Thank you for your subscription or thank you for buying it at Drive Through RPG. Uh, I am currently trying to figure out how to um, do more with that magazine with regards to my crafts, uh, maybe some photos or some dioramas and things like that. If you have any ideas, I'd love to hear it. I am so appreciative of guys like DM Scotty, Wylock, Jeremy, and V. Um, these are people that I have met or spoken to or emailed and communicated with. I am honored to be sort of part of their, you know, um, crew, I guess. There's a group of us that I, I think um, we enjoy one another's crafts and uh, always looking forward to seeing what they have next. Uh, but it's also sort of a, you know, I always say that it's a community. This community is absolutely just very supportive, very, you know, good, good people. Uh, ignore the little, you know, thumbs down. Every video gets two or three. Um, you know, we ignore those. 
Uh, people post nasty comments sometimes and you got to delete them. Thankfully, you know, that doesn't happen very often. Overall, this community is a very cool community, very supportive. And uh, because of that, uh, those of us who do this, um, we have no problems doing it and continuing it. So uh, I'm looking forward to November because I will be with this group again. Um, Jeremy, DMG Info uh, from Australia is going to come. Scotty, V, uh, Wylock, we're all going to be there. And it's just going to be a great time to uh, to give them hugs and you know and sit down and chat and uh, talk about what the you know what will we do next or what can we do next. But uh, obviously uh, the channel, if it if it didn't have you guys uh, commenting and supporting, there'd be no purpose in doing it. I could do this without all that video and the editing and all the extra stuff that it adds. But I don't mind doing it because I know that people uh, hopefully will get something out of this and maybe be able to make something for their own gaming table or their own uh, their own needs. So I've always been someone who has uh, shared what I do or make. I, as my career was a technical writer, so whenever I would learn something, I would document it. That turned into a career of book writing, where I would write books for people to learn how to do things. It's just in my nature to share what I do and. Um, I'll continue to do it as long as you guys continue to enjoy watching it. Thanks for uh, paying attention to this video. I hope you like the Goblin Shaman Tower. I'll be back next week with another project. This is DM Jim. Y'all take care. See you next week.